So yesterday we discussed the variations of the Sukkah Tachas Sukkah. And the Brisa told us that even though the Mishnah says that the bottom Sukkah is Puzzle and the top Sukkah is Kosher, sometimes they're both Puzzle, sometimes they're both Kosher, sometimes the bottom is Kosher and the top is Puzzle. That's one thing that we started yesterday that we're going to finish today. But we also talked about a Sukkah under a tree. And Toys was told us that if the tree doesn't have a lot of schach on it, but the sukkah has full schach, there's no problem at all. The only problem in the Gemara is if the sukkah requires the help of the schach from the tree, then there was a problem of mixing schach kosher into schach posel. But other than that, the fact that there's a, min a, mi a minimum of schach from the tree above the sukkah would not have posed a problem. I just want to start today by asking the Saida. If you're sitting in your sukkah and it starts to rain and you pull your slot down, are you yoitze, the mitzvah of sukkah, is your sukkah still good even though the shlak is covering it? So at first glance, we would say, of course not, you're sitting under a roof. But we're today going to encounter a shita of Rabbeinu Tam who holds that that is 100% a kosher sukkah. So therefore, it's worthwhile to have a shlak because then, according to Rabbeinu Tam, you could be mekai in the mitzvah of sukkah with the shlak down uh, in the rain. So let's see the Gemara. So the Gemara was, was helping us understand all the different scenarios of the top Sukkah being puzzled, the bottom sukkah being puzzled. So I'm going to go back to Daftes Summit Base. Hey, Chidom. So I want to go back just a little bit earlier. Sometimes both of the sukkahs will be kosher. Hey, Chidom. When will both of the sukkahs be kosher? The lower one doesn't have enough strach. The hell, Yoyna, Silta, Muruba, Mecham. So right off the bat, the lower sukkah won't be good because it's a sukkah takas sukkah. But the upper one's not good either, not good either because the kaimi al yoyna v'soich esrim. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's pamishtem ksheris. I I was uh, confused. So when when they're both kosher, is if the lower sukkah is chamsam ruv mitzilta, and therefore its chach isn't valid, and it has to rely on the schach of the upper sukkah. The, old, the upper sukkah is a good sukkah. And the and even the schach of the upper sukkah is within 20 amas of the ground. So really, it's one tall sukkah because the schach of the lower sukkah doesn't really count. It's ham tom aruba mitzilta. So it's like one tall sukkah, almost like a sukkah with a mezzanine. Palm shushtem suois, one with both the sukkahs be possible, heichidami. Both the upper and the lower sukkah had proper kosher ischach. So that tells us right away why the lower one will be puzzled, because it's beneath a, a regular sukkah. The upper one is puzzled, is the kaime al yoyna lamayla meyashimama, because the upper sukkah, its chach was 20 amis above its floor, which would mean 20 amis above the level of schach of the lower sukkah, which is the floor of the upper sukkah. Sometimes the bottom of sukkah will be kosher and the top one will be puzzled, exactly the opposite to the case of our Mishnah. What would be the case for that? The bottom sukkah is a regular kosher sukkah with proper stock. The yoyna and the upper is chamta merubu mitzilta. Now, what we try to learn in this Gemara is when we say Tachtoyna Tzeltam Rub Mechamto, it doesn't mean independent of the Elyon. It means the Tachtoyna combined with the Schach of the Elyon would be Tzelta Rub Mechamto. The Kaimi Tavar Besachesh, and they're both within 20. So therefore, the Schach of the upper Sukkah will combine with the Schach of the lower Sukkah to make the lower Sukkah kosher. Because when you're under the lower Sukkah, you have uh, some total. Of tzilta merubimachamta, but if you're above the lower sukkah and you're just exposed to the schach of the upper sukkah, you don't have enough schach. 
and when will the upper one be kosher and the bottom one be posel, which is the flagship case of a Mishnah, they're both proper sukkahs, the kaime el yoyna besay cheshem, and the upper sukkah is not 20 amasai, so it's a kosher sukkah. Practical Mara, Shita, what Kiddush has been shared with us in Rabbi Yirmiya's halacha? Rabbi Yirmiya was the one who gave us all these variations. What Kiddush is he teaching us? There's, there's nothing that we don't know already. Rashi says, Basically, what Rabbi Yirmi was listing off is sukkahs that didn't have enough schach is not a good sukkah, so it won't impact the other sukkahs. Why do I need your Rabbi Yirmi to tell me that? Zok Gemara, the Chiddush of all of the Rabbi Yirmi's cases boils down to one case. The case where he said that the lower sukkah would be kosher and the upper one would be puzzled, that's where we need it. Because what you're doing is you're combining, you're supplementing the schach on the lower sukkah with the schach from the upper sukkah. Now that's a dangerous thing to do. If the the schach of the upper sukkah is below 20 amis, it's kosher. But if it's above 20 amis, it'll be puzzled. So you're sort of playing with fire if you're not careful to make sure that the upper schach that we need to rely on is low enough. You might think you have to be geyser, that the schach, the upper schach might be too high, making it at the schach puzzle, and then you're relying on it to supplement the schach of the lower sukkah, and that will be a, that will lead to a not a kosher sukkah. Kamash Mulan, that we're not worried about that. When somebody is supplementing the lower level schach with the upper level schach, he will make sure that that upper level schach is within 20 amas of the floor. And if it's higher, he won't use that to supplement the lower levels. Zok tehele gemara. Kama yehei, ben sukkah l'sukkah, we're in Yud HaMadal. We're in Yud HaMadal for about 10 lines from the top. And the Mishnah tells us that having a sukkah under a sukkah is going to be possible. And the reason why it's going to be possible is because we have, we have a special puzzle that tells you you can't have a sukkah under a sukkah. The sukkah is for one sukkah, not two sukkahs. So the Gemara wants to know how it's high. It's very misleading for guests. Why? Right. All of us knows what type of a sukkah he has, whether it's above 20 or below 20. But for a guest, he comes in, he sees that the sukkah is below 20, and he doesn't have that, that you it's have. It's relying on the, uh, and if someone was borrowing your sukkah. And, and, or, or coming in to take Kiddush or something like that, he doesn't know that you're an Amor. Uh, he can't, he I can't hear. tell you. I hear. Very good, good point. So, Frank Demar, how much height does the upper sukkah have to have to be considered a sukkah for the purposes of passing the sukkah below it? We take the Achtoi Nipsu. Amar Avunet Tefach. The minimum sukkah, not halachically to be kosher as a sukkah, but to be considered a sukkah for the purposes of ruining the lower sukkah is the height of a tefach. Because you find a tefach is the minimum size for an oil. That was a mouthful. So what does what the Bryce say? We know that you have, you have a mace that's in a, an enclosure, it's under an oil. Anything that's in that oil, even though it doesn't come into contact with the mace, will become tummy. Because the oil creates one environment that any tumma in it will spread. But that's what the Bryce says. Tevach, al tevach, from tevach. If you have an oil that's leads to tevach high, a tevach wide and a tevach long, so it's a cubic tevach, in, in a structure like that, if there's a mace in it, anything in that oil will become tummy. However, if you have a person standing on the roof above the mace, he's shielded from the tumor because the oil, not only does it spread the tumor underneath it to everything underneath it, but it also stops the tumor from penetrating the oil. So if something's right on top of the roof, right above where the mace is, he remains tar because the oil is high. However, if it's not considered an oil because it's not a tefach high, so it will no longer spread tumor underneath the oil because it's not an oil. And therefore, if you're standing on the roof right above the mace, you will become tummy because it will not prevent the tummy from, from escaping. So you see this concept that a tefach is an oil. Therefore, if there's even a tefach in between your lower sukkah 
and your upper sukkah, the lower sukkah is going to be possible. So, uh, so David Leibman is asking, one tevach would not be a kosher sukkah. So how could it be that a not kosher sukkah will actually possible the sukkah below it? In fact, that's a very good kasha. And that, that's Shmuel's opinion. But but Funi says, for purposes of passing a sukkah, even though it's not a kosher sukkah, it will still pass the sukkah below it. A little bit difficult to digest, but that's what Rafuna says. The Pachista of Rabbi Barafuna Amri, they say it's four tvachim of height. Once again, not the ten tvachim that would render a sukkah kosher, but four tvachim of height is what creates a, 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 a significant area. Never just to be clear, yes, um, sir, are we calling just two levels of schach? Two sukkahs? Yes. According to Rafuna, indeed we are. But that's that's what it is. That's all we're talking about. Two levels right. of schach. Right. Because right? it's not literally a sukkah. You can't live in that right. space. Right. Right. Okay. I just, need, just need to be clear on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, and and, and Rafuna said, I'm sorry, Rabchista, the Rabbi Bar Rafuna said, it's four tvachim, because you find four tvachim is the minimum. Now, it's interesting that the Gemara says, Amokim Chosher. So we're talking about, for instance, if you want to section off a, a Rosh Hashanah in the Rosh Hashanah it's got to be Dalit al Dalit. But that's, we're talking about area. Where do you see height? The Tosha says that that you see Lugabi, an opening of a Pesach, it has to be four Tvachim You see that four Tvachim is a significant space. Ushmul Amar, which is going to be consistent with what David Leibniz suggested, Asara, my time, exactly his reasoning, exactly David's reasoning. My time is Ushmul, Kechshir Kach in order for you to be considered a sukkah that will pass the sukkah below it, it has to be a sukkah. Just like you need it to be 10 tvachamai in order for it to be a valid sukkah. In order to be a valid sukkah that it should disqualify the sukkah below it, it has to be 10 tvachamai. So now, the Gemara is going uh, to quote our Mishnah, which is seemingly going to contradict Shmuel's opinion. Shmuel says, in the Tanakama of our Mishnah, that the only time that a problem of Sukkah Gabi Sukkah is if the upper Sukkah was 10 Fachamai. If not, then there would not be a problem of Sukkah Gabi Sukkah. Tanan, our Mishnah says, Rabbi Yehuda, I mean, Rabbi Yehuda is a dissenting opinion in our Mishnah, and he says, if nobody lives upstairs, then the lower Sukkah will be kosher. What does Rabbi Yehuda mean when he says, if it means literally no one happens to be there. They could be there, but no one happens to be there. Practical Mara, that can't be Pshat of Yehuda. Auto the urine Kagarmi. It doesn't make a difference whether or not someone's actually living there. That wouldn't determine whether or not it's a sukkah. It's height. Some features might be determining factors whether or not it's a sukkah. But what's the difference if people are actually living there or not? When you're not inside your sukkah, your sukkah is not a sukkah anymore. It has nothing to do with someone actually being there. El Alav, my ain't the urine. What did Rabbi Huda mean when he said, if no one lives there, it's not considered a sukkah, means kol she'en ruyaladim. If it's not a livable space, <clears throat> if it's not a livable space, then it's not considered a sukkah, the pasal the sukkah below. So why would it not be a livable space? What would be an example of something that's not a livable space? The loy So you see Rabbi Huda is saying, that when is a sukkah gabi sukkah possible only for ten vachim? If it's lower than ten vachim, a sukkah gabi sukkah won't be a problem. But that's Rabbi Yehuda, who's the dissenting opinion. The Tanakama holds even then it's going to be a good sukkah. Which means that Shmuel is going to be schwer because Shmuel describes the ten vachim. That would make sense according to Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda says you have, it has to be livable. And we're assuming that means it has to be ten vachim your abundant hold vice the even if the upper sukkah is not livable, it's still going to pass. So it's shver on Shmuel. Zok Gemara, you have wrong shot in your Buddha. It's not shver in Shmuel at all. You're assuming that what Buddha meant that if it's not livable upstairs, it's because it's not tall enough. No, that's not what it means. He also Abdimi Amar by Myrava. He said that in Myrava they explained your Buddha. What it means is it may not achtoyna if the schach of the lower level, which means the floor of the upper level. If it's not strong enough, the floor of the upper sukkah is simply not sturdy enough to hold all of the bedding and the mattresses 
of the upper sukkah, then the tachtar nekshera. That's what Rabbi Yudah meant. Not with the height. The chachamim, the tanakama, when they said sukkah al gabi sukkah is possible, that's only if the upper sukkah is at least ten tachem high. Like Shmuel said, Rabbi Yudah brings another feature in, and he says if the floor of the upper sukkah, meaning the schach of the lower sukkah, is not sturdy enough to support the weight of the necessary bedding apparatus, that's not called livable, and then the sukkah is not a sukkah and it won't pass. Frank the Gemara, are you suggesting are you telling me that the home hold, even if the schach of the lower sukkah cannot hold what's going on in the upper sukkah, it's still considered a sukkah? How could that be? It's, it's not livable. Dr. Gemara, the Rabban holds, if you can even hold one or two pillows on one or two mattresses, minimal, minimal, it's good enough to qualify it as a sukkah, and therefore it'll pass out the lower sukkah. The Buddha says, no, you have to be able to use it full out with no reservation. If you can't use it properly and fill it up with beds and mattresses the way you want to do it properly, it's not considered a sukkah. And that's the machlaikis, how usable, how livable does the upper sukkah have to be? So they ask a very big kasha on this Gemara. And that is, if I was talking to you about what's a livable sukkah, I would say, can you eat in there? Can you have a chair and table? Can you have a, a chairs and a table there and eat there? Most of it's defining the validity of the sukkah based on being able to sleep in the sukkah. So there's a big machloik, a salach al Okay, that So so there's a big machloik, the Mordechai holds that a sukkah that you could only eat in but not sleep in will be a puzzle of sukkah. It's not even a sukkah for eating unless it's royal to sleep in it. An example that we could be familiar with would be a sukkah in a bad neighborhood. If you're in a bad neighborhood, you'll eat in the sukkah by day or even in the evening, but you wouldn't dare sleep in the sukkah because that might be a, a long sleep. So, so that's a sukkah that you can't sleep in. A sukkah that you can't sleep in is a machloikis rishonim if that's a kosher sukkah, even to eat it. The Mordechai, quoted by the Ramah, holds it's a puzzle of sukkah, you can't even eat in it. And other Yishonim learn that you could eat in it. A sukkah for Achila is a sukkah for Achila, and a sukkah for Shina is a sukkah for Shina. So there are those who want to bring the Raya from this Gemara that the Mordechai is right, that since the, since the Gemara here quantifies if it's a sukkah based on being able to sleep in it and not based on being able to eat in it, Vice the a sukkah wouldn't be kosher unless you could sleep in it. Of course, the Rishonim argue, so it's not dafka, but this is one of the places where they bring a riot from. I thought the criteria was Rosh Hashanah. That's height. That's, that's, that's height. The dimensions. I mean, that's dimensions. The dimensions of the sukkah, Rosh Hashanah, you could sleep in as well. Even though if it's only Rosh Hashanah, you might have to crunch your legs up a little bit. And they discussed that. They actually discussed that. And, and be standing up. And, and was, sleep standing up. One sheet says, you're a lot, Rosh Hashanah, if, if your toes are sticking out of the sukkah, what's the problem? You can sleep that way. Or you could scrunch it up a little bit. You know, most of the time when we sleep, we're not totally stretched out. You know, we're, we're a little bit, we're a little bit curled up. But that becomes a, that becomes, that becomes a, um, a, 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 a silo. That's great. Because even if you have a bad neighbor, a bad neighbor, Parties all night. All of a sudden, your sukkah is busted. What are you talking about? When we, when we were in the mirror, you know, in Eretz Yisrael, all of the mirror passes, all of the porches are offset. Mm -hmm. So when we were in the mirror, who was right beneath us? The Helig is Villa Rebbe, mm -hmm. and he snored. Mm -hmm. So, so no, worse than that. So the Bachem in my sukkah spilled a negavaser out on him, and he stopped snoring. Like they have buses coming all night, whatever. Yeah. yeah. What happens if we're afraid your, your schach is going to dry out and if it dries out, it's going to become silta, it's going to become silta. so above, over the schach, you spread a sheet to shield the schach from the sun. That's if the lifeguard can't swim and you have to hire a lifeguard to make sure the lifeguard is safe. Oi, the 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 rain, no? I'm sorry? Same thing with the slot for the rain, no? That's right. That's right. Oi, or you have a problem with little pine needles in your soup. So because of that, you put a 
a, a, a sheet underneath the schach to capture anything that falls off of the schach. Or you have a canopy bed. So when you're under the bed, you're under a canopy bed. Shula, that took his puzzle. If you have naklita mita, which is a bed with a canopy, but not four posts, only two posts, so there's no flat roof in the canopy of your bed, that's going to be allowed. So here we have some very interesting rishonim. So Rashi says the purpose of nesher is and Rashi speaks out of his sudden dover makabel tumdu. A sudden is makabel tumdu, it's a sheet, and therefore it's pasul eschach. So it's pasul eschach. Or she pierced a gabi kinoif. Claim where I feel like piercing with the nesher. El lenoy al mitosay. Even if the sheet is not to help the eschach, rather it is just part of the ornamental design of your bed. It's going to be pasul because Rashi tshula mishum de ena yoshev the sukkah because you're not sitting in the sukkah. The oil mafsik peneyam, because the oil is being mafsik between you and the sukkah. You're not sitting in the sukkah, you're sitting in your own personal oil. Let's have a look at what Toysvi says over here. Very, very interesting. That's hecha the chamsa maruba mitzilta beloy sadden. This is only if Rachi says. Even if you have perfectly good schach, by putting up an oil underneath the schach or above the schach, you're not sitting under schach, you're sitting under an oil. Toysvah doesn't learn that way from the Chuvah Sagoyim. Toysvah says, this is speaking where there wasn't enough schach. So, so the sheet was actually supplementing the schach. Zog Toysvah says, But if your schach is perfect without the sadden, even if you have the sadden there, it'll be kosher. Ve'na sadden poislois. So this is a massive off the chart Swedish, because what it's telling you is, is that if you have full kosher ischach, no matter what else is there, there's no problem. The obvious kash on Toysus, so my show speaks about, is what we just learned yesterday. Then I bezoi, why can't I make a sukkah under a tree? As long as my schach is good, make it under a tree. Vayna sadden So, so well, there you have a special puzzle. So, so the Masha explains there's a very big difference. If you made it under a tree, the tree was there first. So it was never a sukkah first. But if you made it a sukkah, and now it has a Shem sukkah, the Shem oil of a sukkah, nothing you do later will undo that. So therefore, even though you put a sat or naklita mita, or, or, or not a naklita mita, it's not a shayla anywhere, kinai, no matter what you do, building an oil underneath the sukkah won't, won't take away from the oil of the sukkah. And you'll never, you'll never have a problem. You cannot disqualify a kosher sukkah. Once it's kosher, it's always kosher. According to the shita, once you make a kosher sukkah, even if you cover it with a shlak, it's a hundred percent kosher sukkah. So there's a strong, there's strong support to sit in a sukkah with a shlak because you're makayim the mitzvah sukkah. Because according to the way Toysus is learning from the tshuva sagaynim, once you make a proper sukkah, no other oil over or above it will be able to negate it. It's a huge chiddush, and, and 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 it's good to know. So if, if there's somebody in the shear who's in the schlock business, hire him because uh, you'll be able to be the kind of mitzvah of sukkah even if it's raining. Zog the Gemara Vaiter. Amar Chisto. Loi shanu. Elam ipnei This that we say that it'll be possible is only if the reason why you hung the sheet there is because you want to stop things from falling in. Meaning it's acting as an independent oil. Aval in the if it's just there for noy sukkah, it's a beautifully decorated sheet. Sure, it'll be kosher because it's bottle to the sukkah because it's there. Lenoisa, Rashi ein shem schach alav uksheira. It doesn't have it in a schach, so therefore it will sort of be bottle as, as the decoration of the sukkah. Zok to Gemara Pshita. What is the great chiddush of Rabbi Chista? It says it black and white in the Mishnah. It says the reason why you put the sheet there was with the nesher. So obviously. If it wasn't with Ben Nesher, it would be kosher. Ben Nesher, none. So, if you were the who did not feel the noisa, you would have thought that the same halacha applies, even if you hung up a sheet for noisa. The reason why the Mishnah said that the reason why you hung the sheet there was for Nesher, it's only Urchid and Milsakatani. The Tan is hopping on a common reason why someone would do that, but not that that's the only place 
where it would cause a problem, Kamash Malon, that no. The, the mission that says a Pnei Nesher is to be specific. It's only going to be a, a soul if it's a Pnei Nesher. But otherwise, otherwise, if it's only there, it's just going to be kosher. Preklamor Lema Messiah. Let's bring a Raya to a Pchista that if it's for Noi Sukkah, it's not going to pass. What happens if you put proper schach on a sukkah, and then the itri of a kromenu v'sedini na mitzuyarin? You 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 decorated your sukkah with with fabrics, beautifully decorated fabrics, the talba goizin, or you hung nuts, or shkedim, or almonds, or a farsakin. I think or peaches, or imaynim, or pomegranates, parchili anovin, little clusters of grapes, you got tarish or shibaylin, stalks of wheat. Yena is wine in bottles, shmanim oil in bottles, the salt is in flour in bottles. Now, isn't that interesting? Why, then why did the mission say, Bank of Noi Sukkah? It, 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 this sounds like it's a, it's a Judaica shop. Um, no, 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 no. Why does it have to, not only that, why does Gomorrah have to list all these things? I mean, you might as well keep going. I mean, you can list. That's right. We got a shopping right. list over here. So, so I heard over a beautiful, beautiful shot. A beautiful, beautiful shot. He said, What is Sukkah about? Sukkah celebrates. One of the Nisim, we had a non covered, right? But there were other Nisim. We had the Mon, we had the Be'er. How come there's no Yom Tov about that? So the Rishonim teach us is that if you take somebody on a tour for 40 years in the Midbar, you better be providing him with food and drink. If not, you're not a Tzaddik, you're not your Tzaddik, right? So sure, we have a curse of Toyib that the Revolution provided it. But that Hashem had to provide it. We would have not been able to survive. But the Rebbein Shalom didn't just take us in the school bus. The Rebbein Shalom took us in the fanciest coach buses. Buses. He provided for us on the Yakovi. So wherever we walked, we had climate control. We had smooth terrain. We had we had shelter. We didn't get wet from the rain. We didn't get overheated from the sun. That was a luxury tour. The Rebbein Shalom didn't take us on a budget tour of the Sinai Desert. He took us on a first class VIP tour of the Sinai Desert. That's what we make a yom to, because we want to show that the Rebbein Shalom didn't just give us our necessities. The Rebbein Shalom gave us every little detail of what we would need to be comfortable. The Rebbein Shalom truly cared about us. So that's why whenever the Mishnahis and the Rises discuss sukkah, it gets into detail with the Mishmat, because we're trying to highlight that the whole yom of sukkah is about the Rebbein Shalom paying attention to these little details to make sure it will be perfectly comfortable for us. At the end of all of this, all of the decorations, is that it's also. It's also no. It's also the stopic men. When you, huh, I didn't, I didn't even get to the punchline yet. All of these noy sukkah become muksa, and also the stopic men at motzi yom tov achim shalchak until yom tov is over. Right. Then his forget that is the riot. The it says well doesn't say anything about the sukkah being a problem. You have a riot sukkah is not a problem. That's exactly the riot. And his nalim, and he made it nai that these things should not become muksa, then the fault a coil of these noise. So you hear you have a chloriah that noise sukkah are in mafsik. So you have a raya to a that noise sukkah don't create a barrier between you and the stach. So why do, I, why do they always say that noise sukkah is muksa? Because they make it nai, it's not muksa. If you made it nai, what would be muksa? Really? Yeah. Not local? Not local, yeah. So what's that thing saying? Said, you think it's not, well, not the Gemara said. The Gemara is a coil of it night. So Rashi said, the coil of it night. Kagoyin. So Amar, this is what you have to say. Any boydel mayhem called beina shmasha shal yom tevarishon. We know what triggers the muksa. If the beina shmasha is going into yom tev, it's muksa. Then it's muksa for the whole yom tev. So if you speak out, any boydel mayhem called beina shmasha shal yom tevarishon, then the loichal kedusha layu. There will not be kedusha chal on the noy sukkah. And therefore, you'd be able to use him al sukkah, al sukkah, no other tnai will work. So that's that's Allah. So let me ask you a question. Are you allowed to have Hanoah from your sukkah on Yom Tov? Yeah. 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 Are you allowed to have Hanoah from your sukkah on Shemini Yetzirah, on Simchus Torah? Allah is not, right? Why? Because in Migudis Katsoi, the Beis Hanoah, Shemini Yetzirah, Simchus Torah, Allah is not, right? Why? Because in Migudis Katsoi, the Beis Hanoah, Shemini Yetzirah, the Beis Hanoah, Shemini Yetzirah, the afternoon after Ishan and Rabbah, going into Shemini Yetzirah, there you need it for a sukkah. So since it's it's muksa for that benish moshes, because that's still suffolk of Hashana Rabbah, therefore it's muksa all, all the last days. The problem is, Frank Tysus, your esrig, you also don't need on Shemini Yetzirah. 
And the Esrik, we say, is not Muksa on Shemini Atzeris. So what's the difference between the Sukkah, which you don't need on Shemini Atzeris, yet it will still be Muksa, and the Lul of an Esrik, which you also don't need on Shemini Atzeris, and is not Muksa. So Toysvah says a beautiful, beautiful part. Toysvah says, because of the following reason. He says that usually, usually, I mean, I'll, I'll read it inside. It's beautiful. Let's look at the third line of Toysvah. What if Hashanah Rab in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, Shkia time, when we're already at Benesh Moshes, let's say you want to eat. You're mechuyiv at that point to eat in the sukkah. Boy, you mech al basukkah. You're mechuyiv to eat in the sukkah. Which means during the Benesh Moshes, post Hashanah Rab, going into Shemini at Saris, you still have a chiv, practically, to eat in the sukkah. And therefore, umid is katsoy le benesh moshes, is katsoy le chulayim. Abal esrik, le chazer benesh moshes. The esrik, you're never going to use benesh moshes. The meikar kadam nafat fei. You already daven chakras, you already were yod to the mitzvah of Abba before. So there's no need at all for the mitzvah to use your lul of an esrik, the, the benesh moshes after Hashanah Rab. Therefore, it won't be moksha. But the, the uh, sukkah will be moksha. So let's see the Gemara back. Frank Gemara, you, Dr. Gemara, you don't have a riot from this brisa that you could sit under no sukkah, you're not a hafsik, because the sheets that were listed in this brisa as not being a problem, who said they're hanging off the ceiling? Maybe their tapestry is hanging on the wall and it's not blocking the sukkah. So therefore, you don't have a riot. Dr. Gemara, it's my we learn. No sukkah ain't my might in the sukkah. If you have decorations hanging down off the sukkah in the sukkah and your sukkah is just 10 fachim high, we don't say that it makes it less than 10 tefachim. If it was schach hanging down, it would passel your sukkah because it lowers your clearance. But no sukkah, which also lowers your clearance, will not passel. Why not? So there's a one line toysvah here that's a very important toysvah. And toysvah says, no sukkah, kurumim haprusim lamayla lenoi. If you have a kurumim, you have a, I don't even know what they are, but they're, they're things that you hang for, for the beauty of sukkah. It won't lower the ceiling if it's 20 MSI, so it won't lower it for your benefit. The lav min they're not part of the schach. The schach have, if you do consider them schach, then have a mifsil, then it would be possible anyway. We show them a kabal tuma because kromim are things that would be makabal tuma, they're considered completed vessels. Oh, sorry, it's a lalich? Okay, so it's, so it's a. It's a Right, it's, yeah, it's, okay, so it's like it's like a, a, a tapestry. But, but what's important here is if you have a sukkah that's exactly 10 fachim and you have these tapestries hanging down below, so technically it is lowering your clearance, that would not pass the sukkah. So the question is, what's the difference between a tapestry hanging down and pieces of schach hanging down? Either way, it lowers your clearance. So it's possible to suffer. The price is like that. You write and say, "Chiyut of a little ill." You should dear shurucha. The whole problem with less than ten is it's a dear shurucha. You can't live there properly if you're constantly banging into this obstruction. Shiny halcha to lenoya suyim. If you hung it here, obviously you want it there. So you cannot say that would you hung there because you want it there because you like it there. That will possible your sukkah because you hung it there. You want it there. That's why noya sukkah will not create a condition of dear shurucha to possible your sukkah. Zaktigamar, beautiful, beautiful. Minyaman Abdi Rabashi, story time. Minyaman was the servant of Rabashi. It Misha lay ketunta the Maya. He got wet. Could be he was the guy snoring in the sukkah, and the guy above him threw his Negavasa down, and now he's soaking wet. So he had to dry his pajamas. So after he got dressed, the Ishtatcha Amatalalta, he took, it was a nice sunny day, he took his pajamas and he put it on top of the schach on the sukkah to dry out on the sun. Amal Rabashi, Rabashi told him, Dial, you take it off. Because if you leave your pajamas up on top of the sukkah, people are going to think that I'm using that as my sach. People are going to learn from me that they could use clothing as sach. And surely you can. Practically, what's the problem? You can see it's wet. They can see it's wet. So it's obviously there to dry, not to act as sach. Which is what the which is what the Evid answered back when Yoman answered back. Come on, they see it's wet; they're not going to make that mistake. 
So Rabashi told him, Lichiyav Shekamila. What I mean is, now I'll leave it there. But once it dries, that's when I want you to remove it so people shouldn't think it's Chach. Rektech Shaila. Didn't we just say, Asuk is Mukta Tzashar Bano? You can't use it as a drying rack. It's also it's, it's from the Sukh. So what the Achrayim answer is here you're having Hano, Shaloi Kader Hano Asun. The normal way to have a from a sukkah is not to use it as a drying rack. But since it's not Kader Hano Asun, that's why it wouldn't be a problem. It's my fact anymore. No ye sukkah, Hamiflog Mimeno Arbo. You have hanging things that are hanging down from the top of your sukkah, but they hang down eight, I'm sorry, four tvachim to hang down, which is quite a bit. So at what point is it hanging too low to be able to argue that it's bottle to the schach? Rab Nachman or Mokshevi, that's not a problem. But Rab Chista, the Rabbi Bar Avuna, or Psula, they said it's possible. Rab Chista, the Rabbi Bar Avuna, so they held it was possible. So listen, Rabbi Chista, if it's kosher or possible, Rab Chista said it was a possible. So look at this story. Rab Chista, the Rabbi Bar Avuna, ikloy le veresh kolusa. Let me ask you a question. If I invite you to my house and I know you only eat Hamish Echshem, you don't eat OU. Am I allowed a mixed OU ingredients? Am I allowed to serve you OU, or is that enough? What do you think? You don't eat OU. And I invite you to my house, you only eat Hamashek Sherem. And I serve all you. Is that an Avlon? So keep that child in mind. But Christa and Rabbi Baruna did not sit in sukkahs that had schach hanging down. And where did Rab Nachman, because Rab Nachman was the dying who worked in the home of the Reish Kalusa. So where did Rab Nachman give them to sleep? Agninu Rab Nachman Bisukkah Shinoyeya Mufloged Mimena Arbitvach. Rav Nachman purposely put them into a sukkah. He put them to sleep in the sukkah that he knew they hold its possible. They didn't say anything. So the shaila here is how could Rav Nachman put Yid in the sukkah? He knows. He knows that they're makbed on such a sukkah. How could he put them there? That's mamish like serving you from a hechshu that you don't need from. So the Achrayim explained that when aren't you allowed to serve a guy or you, that's if you mix it into your ingredients. But if you have a, a, a drink that you put on the table and there's a big OU symbol on it, then he sees it like you see it. He does not eat it if he doesn't want it. Rab Nachman put him into a sukkah that had no yeah hanging down. He's not babbling them. Why? Because they could see it. So he's not being mashed with That was one shot. But there's another shot of what happened over here. Notice, it doesn't say where he served them to eat. You don't think he served them to eat when they came? It only talks about where he put them to sleep. Busepis, because he knew that if they're going to sleep there, they couldn't see it. It was dark. So they would go in and they would sleep there and they wouldn't be able to see it. So what do you want to do that for? Very simple. Rabbi Nachman himself wanted to know who is the Allah like? Is this possible or isn't? And he knew even the head of them maybe the Kola Yudam. So he figured he'll put them in the sick overnight. If they're if the haluk is talking like them, the Ibish would make it that there's no way they would end up sleeping there, something would happen. And 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 therefore, if they would end up sleeping there, he has a right that the look is not like that. So Rab Nachman was doing that Rebbe Shemaisa. Maybe he put them there because he didn't want them to sleep over. <laughs> Yassi. Yassi. Yes. Yassi. Maybe he put them there because he didn't want them to sleep over. <laughs> I hear. So that's a different shotgun that they said. Anyway, they didn't protest. So Rab Nachman asked them, Amr Lahu, did you change your mind? I see you're not protesting. Um, they told him, no, we, we don't. We didn't change your mind. You're not allowed to sleep in such a sukkah, in our opinion. Why did we sleep here? Because we're coming to be a makabal panim, our rebbe, on Yom Tev. And we're doing a mitzvah, and therefore, upturim in our sukkah, we'll put repata from the sukkah, and Taisha speaks out, that's only if they would have lost the opportunity to be makabal panay rabban, in the event that they have to go looking for another sukkah. So since they didn't have a choice, they would be allowed to sleep there. And there's a whole big shayla if, in fact, there is a chiyiv lekabu play rabbi. We have that minute, you go visit your rabbi. However, there's a big shayla uh, if you're supposed to, I forgot, I think the night of Yehuda says, the night of Yehuda says that there's no mitzvah nowadays to be lekabu play rabbi. Why? Because the, where does it come? Where does this thing come from to be lekabu play rabbi? It's because shalosh it's because we used to go be oil rego. So Haitacha now, we were not oil rego. We don't go to the ancient shore. We don't go to base of So now we should go visit Rabbeim. Haitacha is a past nisht. So, uh, but a lot of people argue with him and forget. You see stories in the Gemara 
you see stories in the Gemara where Amiroyim or even Hanoyim after the Chorban did go visit their babe. But then there's a shaila if, it, if, if there's a, 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 a if it's a mitzvah chayuvis or not. Um, and there's a shaila if you're mechuyif to go. And if you're not mechuyif to go, how could you say anan shluch mitzvah anan? The territory is once you're there and your mom is by your rebbe, there for sure it's a mitzvah. No more be done Mutter lishon bekila besukkah. You're allowed to sleep in a structure that's called a kila. Raji says what a kila is. It's a it's a canopy, but it's not a canopy with a flat roof with four posts. It's a canopy with two posts, and it's like a tent. It's similar to what the Mishnah discusses as naklite hamita, but we're going to see that there's a difference. So the Mishnah says you're allowed to sleep under naklite hamita. It's not an oil. And Yehuda said you're allowed to sleep in akila, which seems to be a similar type of arrangement. The sukkah, the sukkah, gag, even if it has a gag. So even so, this kila, even if it has four posts now, Shmuel is saying it'll be kosher. You could sleep underneath it. However, there's one condition: can't be ten fachamai. If it's ten fachamai, then it would have its own status as an oil, which would be a hefsek between you and the sukkah. However, kila, if it's less than ten fachamai, is not a problem. Tashma. Let's see if this is consistent with the price. So it's schwer on Shmuel, because here at the Bryce is United. So it's not a catch. The kilo that's outlawed in the Bryce is high 10. The kilo allowed by Shmuel is less than 10. So this is underneath the bed. If underneath the bed, the bed is for sure not 10 fucking high, yet it's still not Yoytzeh. So how could Shmuel say Yoytzeh? No, it's not. What type of bed is it? It's a mita gavayasar. We're talking about a tall bed. Tashma. Oisha Pires al Gabi Kinoifis, our Mishnah, says if you under a canopy, psula. So, Frank the Gemara, this is also Shmuel's kila, also is like the Kinoifis. It has a flat roof, it's like a canopy. So, why isn't it possible like the Kinoifis? In the Mishnah, when it says that the canopy, sleeping under the canopy, you won't, you won't be out to the Mitzvah Sukkah. That's also speaking where the canopy is 10 fachamai. In fact, it's a very nice swara, but when we, we're going to quote a brighter that's going to clearly say that the kinoifis is going to be possible even if it's less than 10. The Tanya, Naklitin Shnaim, Naklitin has two posts, so the, there's no roof. It's just a point at the top of the bed. The kinoifis, Arba, it's four posts, which means there'll be a flat surface on the top of the canopy. Pierce Agabe Kinoivis, Sula, Agabe Nakliton Shera. However, the Nakliton that are kosher, Nakliton are only kosher if it's less than 10. But under those same circumstances, the Bryce says that Kinoivis are possible. Machal de Kinoivis, Avobish Engaboy Nasar. So you see, Kinoivis are going to be possible. You can't sleep under a canopy, even though the canopy is less than 10 Falchim. Yet Shmuel said, you're allowed to sleep under a kilo. Even though the kila, if the kila is less than ten fachim, the kimara is shiny kinoifis. There's a big difference between the construction quality of kinoifis, which will be a problem even if it's less than ten, and the lightweight construction quality of the kila, which is only significant if it's more than ten. The shiny kinoifis, the kavi kinoifis, are built much more solid, much more sturdy, and therefore, even if it's less than ten, it's an oil chosh, and therefore you can't sleep underneath it. But a kila which is much more flimsy, unless it's ten fachim high. We'll say it's not considered an oil kosher, but like you're under your covers in your bed. Take the mur. Bare sukkah gabi sukkah, the kavia. Sukkah gabi sukkah, we say it, it's a kavut of a sukkah. Varma Shmuel, and Shmuel himself, who's the author of this halacha, of kila, says kech sheyer kach psulo, which means, which means that the sukkah will only be a sukkah, it, it, it'll only pass with the sukkah. If it's not a sukkah, it will not pass it. There, since the sukkah on top is going to totally obliterate and pass out the lower sukkah, it doesn't have the koyach to do that unless it's 10 fachim high. But hacha, when it's merely a question of are you allowed to sleep under this canopy, it's not a shadow of passing the whole sukkah. 
So the kinoifis, which even less than 10 is considered an oil, it's not considered oil, it's passing the sukkah. It's just saying if you're underneath that oil, you're not sleeping in a sukkah. But if you want to say that the whole sukkah would be possible, if you want to say the whole sukkah will be possible, there it'll only possible if the uh, if the upper sukkah is above 10. So David's asking a question, and that is, so how come under bed allowed of less than 10? Because that's not even that that's even less significant. A bed is even less significant than uh, than a kinufa. Just like the kila, even the kila, if it's less than ten, you're allowed to sleep underneath it. Amr of Tachlifa Baravimai Amr Shmuel. The bed is not made to be an oil. That's the Gemara's next question. That's right. Zakta Gemara Vaiter. Zakta Gemara Vaiter. Where are we up to? What's the halacha if you sleep in a kila and you're naked? Now, the halacha is, if you're naked, you cannot say Krishna. However, if you're under the cover and your head's sticking out, you're not naked. But if you're in a room and you stick your head out of the room, if you're in the room and you're naked, you stick your head out of the room, there you say that your head goes bus or right of your body. So if you're under a cover with your head sticking out, you're called covered. But if you're in a room with your head sticking out, you're called uncovered. So the Gemara says as follows. You can sleep in a kila and knock it. Why? Because the kila isn't considered an oil. It's like a cover. If it's 10 fachim high, the kila, it has a din of an oil. Then when you stick your head out, it doesn't matter because you're considered in the room where your body is. But if it's less than 10 fachim and it's not considered an oil, and we look at it like a cover. And therefore, there's no problem of sticking your head out. How can that be mistaper? That's also the mistaper the way to look at it. In the Katani Seifa, the Seifa says, what does this compare to? The Bayis Arab, the Kila is like a Kila that's 10 fachim high, is similar to someone who's in a house Arab. He shouldn't just stick his head out the window, because clearly he's still considered inside oil. Shmami no, that the kila that the Brisha says it won't work if you stick your head out. Clearly, it's teaching you that 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 the kila is only a problem of a tenth vach. Zokta more vayter ubayis nami af alpi sheingavoy asar a house a real house even though it's not tenth vachem high even the kviya ayala who the lagara mitkinay therefore a house which is a real house, even though it's shorter than ten fachim, it would no, be no different than the kinoifis that's less than ten fachim that still retains its status of an oil, and therefore you wouldn't be able to stick your head out if you're not dressed inside, because we say your head will be in the same place as your body is, and therefore you'd have to be covered up. Lishnachrina, Amri La, Amri Rav Yehuda, Amri Shmuel, Mutter Lisha and Bechilas Chasal and Besuka. You're allowed to sleep in the Bechilas Chasal and Besuka. Lefi She'ein La Gag, because it doesn't have a gag. Even though it's 10 fachim high. So before we said that a kilo above 10 fachim will be a problem. Now in the other lotion, a kilo above 10 fachim is not a problem. Zog to Gemara. If you sleep in a kilo in a sukkah, so how could Shmuel say your yoytze? How could my skin be sheesh lagad? The kilo that we say you're not yoytze if you sleep underneath it. That's if it has a gag, if it has four posts. But if it only has two posts, even if it's more than 10th vachim, you're allowed to sleep there. Tashma. Naklitin shnayim. A naklit is a canopy, but it only has two posts, so it comes to a point in the middle of the room. The kinoifais, kinoifais are bo. So pierce agabe kinoifais tzula. If you have a canopy with four posts, so you have a flat to it, posel, agabe naklitin shayra. Uvilvad shiloh yehu naklitin gavayim in amita sarit vachim. As long as the Nakhliton aren't 10 Fachim high. So once again, you have a Kasha on Shmulus who holds that Akila with only two posts is Kasha even though it's more than 10 Fachim. Yet Nakhliton is possible if it's more than 10 Fachim. Shai Nakhliton in the Kavi. Nakhliton are also much more sturdy. If they're so sturdy, then they should be possible even less than 10, like a Kenoifis. So tomorrow, no. It, they all have an order. They're not as kavi as kinoifis, and therefore there's only a problem if it's more than ten fachim. But the kavi, nevertheless, 
kilo is even less dirty than Meklitin, and even above 10 Falcom, a kilo would be mutter. Dorish Rabba Babarhuna, Muta Lishan Bikila, you're allowed to sleep with Akila, Ava Pishesh Lagag, Ava Bishadvoya Sar. So he is more makal than everybody, even if it's a flat canopy and it's more than 10 Falcom, you're still allowed to sleep under it, it's not 30. Come on, Kab Yehuda, the Amr Le Asi Oil Arai, Umabatal Oil Kfa. The Buddha holds an oil Arai will never be Mavatal and Oil Kfa. We better stop here. Actually, I have, just, I have like a couple of lines left. I'm just going to run through the last prices. But then, Amar Buddha, the Hagan, the Yino, Lishan, Takasamit, with Nez Kanim, we used to sleep under beds in front of the Zakanim. So, therefore, so therefore, it's a Raya that you're allowed to sleep under something that's not an oil Kfa. Frankly, Amar, so why did we say your whole Allah you can sleep under a Kila? Just say, Allah Krab Yuda. So, come on, Amar Allah Krab Yuda, if you just had Allah Krab Yuda, have Amina, and this is the Swara that Kaim Pir was saying, have Amina, have Amina, Mita. Amita, you could sleep under a bed. It's not even made to sleep under. It's made to sleep on top of. There, if you slept under it, it's not called an oil and, and it's still like you're in the sukkah. The kilo is a canopy that you're de- designed that you sleep under it. Maybe that Rabbi Yehuda would not allow you to sleep under. The time of Rabbi Yehuda holds an oil iron like a kilo, a liquid oil will never be mevat of the oil of the sukkah. Loishna mita, loishna kila, and therefore you're allowed to sleep under a kila in a sukkah, even if it's more than 10 vachim. We'll stop here, and the Mitzvah will pick up here on Monday morning. So we're a half a block behind, because Yud Aleph is really the blood of Tishabov, so we'll be a half a block behind. And we'll start Monday morning. Shkoyach.